Hello and welcome to week four. This week we're going to take a step back from all of the writing and analyzing you've been doing for the first three weeks and look a little bit more closely at quoting, paraphrasing, and summarizing. So in this module you'll be submitting to me assignment 4-3 where you're quoting, paraphrasing, and summarizing to practice to get my feedback on. And then the other assignments you'll actually be completing within, within MindEdge. So part of the reason we wanted to give you the time to go into the incubation period was to allow you to really look at the issue of plagiarism and academic honesty in general. You need to know how to properly quote and paraphrase and summarize your work and then how to properly cite it. So in this module, you're going to look at plagiarism, which can have very deep and hard co um, consequences from getting zeros on assignments to getting zeros in a course to even at some levels being expelled from the university. Most of the time students in the freshman level courses are learning how to cite properly. So a lot of the plagiarism in these situations is kind of accidental. But I would encourage you to go ahead and read SNU's Academic Honesty Policy here, which is available in uh, Module 4.1, uh, just to get yourself familiar with it. So a lot of times students don't know when they're supposed to quote, when they're supposed to paraphrase, or when they're supposed to summarize. Generally speaking, in academic writing, you're going to paraphrase more than you quote. The reason behind that idea is, especially in the social sciences and as you get into some of your more detailed upper level courses, people want to read how you have understood an, um, someone else's theory and how you've applied that to something new. If you have a whole lot of quotes back, uh, back and forth and back and forth in your paper, it can feel a little disjointed because what happens is I, as the reader, would lose your voice because all I would have would be a series of you telling me about these quotes, you incorporating these quotes, and then going on from there. So paraphrasing a summary is something you're really going to do more often. But sometimes you do need to quote. So some things really cannot be rephrased properly without losing some of the uh, meaning that the author had originally intended. So it, you have to, it's a balancing act. You just got to know exactly when to do it. So there's a little visual aid here, so make sure you look at that, because it'll give you an idea of when to use quotes or paraphrases or summaries. So assignment 4.3 is actually going to be completed in here and then downloaded as a Word document and uploaded into Blackboard for me to grade. Now, what's really important about this is you need to make sure that each box you have a paragraph of five to eight sentences, and the paragraph needs to make sense. Rather than just plopping in a quote You've got to give me a context in which how I would understand it. So make sure that you're writing to an audience that has not read the work that you're talking about. And that's a general rule of thumb for any kind of writing that you do. Once you have saved it and it's gone into a Word document, I encourage you to upload that to Grammarly. I posted an announcement earlier in the term about what Grammarly does. It's a type of grammar spell check. You can pay for it and there's and it's I think definitely worth the money, but there's also a free version that you can actually get a lot of help with. If you don't want to take the time to go to Grammarly or you don't want to go that extra step or you, you can't for whatever reason, make sure that you proofread and run your paper through words, grammar, and spell check. I shouldn't see any underlined phrases in green, red, or blue. For example, most of the time if you right click on that, Word will help you correct it. Now things like names are going to be underlined in red and that's not a misspelled word, it's just a name. But you have to actually go that extra step so I can see the process. Then you can actually submit to Blackboard and then I will grade it. So exercise 4-4 is going to help you determine the best time to paraphrase and the best time to quote. And this, I think, is a really helpful exercise, so make sure you take the time to go through it. When you look at quotes and paraphrases and how to integrate them into your work, you've got to remember that quotes must be part of an original sentence that you write. You actually have to introduce the quote. You can't just start a sentence and end a sentence with a quote because it breaks the flow of the paper. Also, when you're doing that, you'll be coming across what it's like to actually cite your work, both within the text and on a separate works cited or references page. The difference between the works cited page and the references page is 
whether you're using APA or MLA style. So make sure that you're paying close attention because sometimes students will mix these up. And in this course, you can do it, you can submit your papers in either MLA or APA, but it depends on whatever major you're going to be going into as to which one makes the most sense to get the feedback on now. If you're planning to go into a humanities-based field, um, anything in fine arts or English, history, political science, those types of things, you'll be using MLA most often. So it might make most sense to start practicing that now and get the feedback so you can make any adjustments that are necessary. APA stands for the American Psychological Association. So if you're going into psychology or sociology or any science, they typically use APA format. And I believe also that business degrees use APA. So you want to look at, go through this module and look exactly what which one's best. When you get to 4.8, you'll actually be looking at the formatting handbooks. Now these are not the full handbook that's actually sold, it's an actual book, but it's a good guide for how to write things in APA or MLA style. If you do decide to go into APA format, from this page, you can either click on APA formatting or MLA formatting. If you click on APA, you'll be taken to a series of pages that will explain APA. You can also download it in PDF format. If you go down here to the list arrow, you go down to APA formatting. Right here, you'll see all of these things down here are APA. So if you go back to the previous page where you had the choice to go to MLA or APA, and you click on MLA, you'll get the same information only for MLA. You don't need to know both styles, but you need to be able to know the one you're going to use the most really well. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Otherwise, I'll see you in class. Bye.